everyone, welcome to the studio. Happy New Year. It is New Year's Day. I'm having a quiet day in the studio. And I just finished up a video for the my Patreon Insider group and I thought, well, I have my pastels out. Why not do another painting using the same palette of pastels that I just used? And I like to do that uh, because it allows me to really get to know a particular palette of pastels. I like to do series of paintings because I really get uh, to know the scene, to get to know the subject. So it's a really valuable way to, to paint and it's just a lot of fun. So I want to invite you to join me. We're going to ease into 2022 with a very simple pastel painting. So if you've been wanting to try pastels, now's your time. I'm going to show you a really, really quick and easy way to get started in painting. And I will finish it all in hopefully 20 minutes time. Actually, I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes and then we're going to stop at 20 minutes and see where we're at. So I want to invite you closer to the studio, to the easel rather. And I'll show you what I have in store for the painting. I put up a piece of uh, UART paper, sanded paper, that I toned with thin acrylic paint just so that I could get a, uh, a darker, warmer tone than the UART paper. Um, I just selected it because I wanted to give a warm feeling to my subject, which is a very simple scene, a field with a grouping of trees and then some distant trees and a nice violet moody type sky and then this really nice stri strip of, of sunlit area in the distance. So that's my subject for pastels. Let me give you, show you uh, my tray of pastels. I already pre-selected this palette so I have some darker, some darks, the colors I want to use for the sky, I want to get a nice moody sky, and then the colors that I want for the field and um, distant trees are in here as well. You'll see how I use that. I have another little tray of hard pastels. These are new pastels. I'm going to use this for the block in and, I, and maybe for and the finishing details. Um, <clears throat> I use this palette of pastels for a demo, as I said, that I did for our Patreon group. So if you're interested in learning a lot more and diving deeper into pastels, then I invite you to join us. I will put the link here for you. And um, of course, there'll be the link in the description. And I have a really great year in store for uh, uh, Patreon insiders. But I want to just have fun at the easel today play a little bit with color and have some fun with the painting and keep it simple. That's the goal. So how are we going to do it? How are we going to keep it simple? We're going to take it four steps. We're going to block it in. Then we are going to rub in that first layer and then we're going to start layering pastel and then we're going to look to see where we want to have the finishing marks. And we just set the timer for 20 minutes. Why 20 minutes? Because I don't want to overthink. I don't want to over uh, analyze. I just want to respond to this scene. This is uh, well my second painting of the year and I just want to have some fun today and just let go and paint. So I'm taking a one of the hard pastels to just sim draw in the big simple shapes of my scene. I'm going to direct my clouds this way. So I've got my tree shapes, my distant tree shapes, my strip of light, and then I see this line here and this line here. That's to remind me that I need to find a way to invite the viewer into the painting and invite the viewer in or out uh, to exit or enter gracefully. So that's what that's all about. So the first step we're going to block in and we're going to block in all of the dark shapes with a dark uh, hard pastel. This is a dark blue. And the, the darkest shapes are these upright planes. So this little cropping of trees. I'm going to darken the, um, the base of the distant trees a little bit. And then I'm going to put a dark line using the side of my pastel so we can have like a wider area. This is the lead in to our painting, right? So we have this nice dark shape that's going to lead the viewer's eye into the painting. All right, I blocked in the darks. Now I want to block in the light areas, which is going to be the sky. And I know that I have, uh, I want it to be moody, so I'm going to use this blue gray for the majority of the sky. But then I also have some clouds, so I'm going to use a pale yellow to block in the cloud shape. 
Actually, let's make it a little bit darker. And then add some light at the horizon as well. All right, so I've blocked in the dark shapes. I've blocked in the light shapes. What is going to be the most intense color? The most intense color is going to be that really bright strip of light. Uh, so I'm going to use a, another brighter yellow to block that in. Now I have to be careful of this strip. I don't want it to look worm-like, right? I don't, I'm going to have to make sure that it's not such a hard edge, solid, uh, linear mark or shape. So we'll adjust that as the painting progresses. Now everything else I have to fill in, it's going to be a middle value. I'm going to put in some purple. Why purple? Because I want it to relate somehow to what's happening in the sky, and I know I'm going to be put I've got a little purple up there too. I know I'm going to be having some purple in the sky. I also have the complement of yellow in this scene, so I wanted to have these two areas have a um, visual connection. Now we've got our distant trees. I want them to feel like they're further back, so I'm going to use a cooler color. So I'm going to use the blue so that I can get that line of trees looking like they're further back. Something just told me that I need another little section of trees right in here just for a little balance. So I'm going to listen to that voice in my head and throw that in there. All right, step one is complete. Step two, I'm going to blend in all of the, this first layer. I'm going to use a piece of pipe insulation foam, which is a great blending tool because it doesn't shred up on the sanded paper. And I'm going to just simply blend all of the layers that I just put down. And you might be wondering why am I doing this? Normally I do this when I work on very light toned paper because what it does is eliminates all of the light areas. Um, so it's not a distraction. But in this case, I want to have a really nice, soft, out-of-focus start or beginning. Because now I can figure out, all right, where do I want to put the most detail and the most focus, add the most clarity? Everything's out of focus, and now I'm going to gradually add layers so I can get uh, the focus back, right? Or, or where do I want the viewer to look? That's where I'm going to add the most detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is reinforce those dark shapes, which are the trees. And you might be looking in, if you were to look at my reference photo, you might say to yourself, well, you know, those trees don't look all that dark. But I'm going to start them off dark, and I can always adjust them. It's much harder to add back the dark. So that's a dark blue layer, and I'm going to add another layer of dark, this time with a dark violet, purple. I like to layer um, several layers of color that are the same or very close in value so that I can get an interesting um, optical blend of color. Here's a dark kind of greenish brown. And wherever I have the dark, I'm just layering these colors. So I have three layers of dark. I think I'll go with one more. How about a reddish brown? And by the way, these are the same colors that I used in my uh, uh, painting for the Patreon group. But it was a marsh scene, so it's interesting to try another subject with the same palette. Alright, so I blocked in all of the dark shapes. Next thing that I want to turn my attention to is to block in the light uh, shapes, which happens to be the sky. Um, but before I do the sky, I want to add color into that distant um, tree line. So I'm starting off with a dark uh, blue violet, but that's actually too dark. So I'm going to modify it with a, a lighter grayed down blue. Um, and you can come back with that hard pastel, because that was really the color that I wanted. So I'm going to come back with it. So I have three layers of color on those distant trees. I'm also using the hard pastel to, to kind of break up the, this tree section, right? Because it's a little bit more um, airy than I have it. So I needed to break it up, so I'm doing some negative painting to kind of um, get the shape of the trees. 
Okay, now I'm going to turn my attention to the sky. Remember, I said I wanted like a moody sky, so I'm going to be using some of these violets, and I'm going and <clears throat> I'm using the side of the pastel and just picking some of the purple pastels that I have already on my um, tray, which is the beauty of working this way. The beauty of pre-selecting a palette is that you can work much. Uh, more efficiently, quickly, and paint with passion. I like to say, wild abandon. You don't have to overthink things because you've already selected out your pastel, so now it's just a matter of laying them down on the paper. I'm using the lighter colors closer to the horizon. I just want it to look um, maybe a little bit stormy, a little bit moody. I'm adding in the pale yellow now just to warm it up just a little bit. What about that underpainting that we can still see, right? We can still see some of the yellows uh, and the, of the underpainting. So I like that. So I'm going to cover it up just a little bit. Playing with the way I make my marks, I want to direct the viewer's eye down into the painting. So I'm going to come in and press a little bit harder with some of my marks just to create that. Um, I like this cloud that kind of has these, these street clouds. So I'm just kind of separating them with the dark. And hopefully this will kind of create a, a directional sign like hey come on down here come look at the trees come explore the field all right so i'm going to leave the sky alone for now and i'm going to turn my attention to the back to the um, meadow and the first thing i want to do is add back in some of this purple i had some in the underpainting but i want to add some more and kind of peek it behind some of these trees look at what happened i got three section of trees that really wasn't in the plan. It just kind of happened that way. But one of the things that I have learned to embrace is the idea that it's important that we listen to our paintings. Sometimes you make a mark and you do something and, and your painting leads you in a different direction. Uh, and you have the choice to decide, hey, do I like that direction? Or maybe I need to do something different. Uh, maybe I need to go back to my original plan. But you have that power as an artist. You have the license. As they say, you have an artistic license. All right, so now I've got the purple back in the field. Let's turn our attention back to the trees and add a little bit more detail. I think what I'm going to do is going to give everything a quick spray. A workable fixative down here and that will give me a little bit more tooth and a little bit more texture where are we at on our timing my timer I like to check ten minutes ten minutes I have ten minutes left so that means I have to take a deep breath and not stress about it because I have everything covered now it's just down to the finishing marks all right so we want to give a little bit more interest to those trees um, they do have a little bit of light on them I'm just going to add a little bit of a pale green. And then I, w I will add some uh, of the golden colors to the meadow. So I'm go remember we had that sp strip of light? Okay, I'm going to put it in there, but very, very lightly and more of a broken line, right? I don't want it to kind of march straight across the page or it will create a visual barrier rather than inviting the viewer into the painting. So I'm going to add in some more of the gold yellowy ochre color. I like the, the violet peeking through, the purples peeking through back there. Again, I am working with this very limited palette and that's partly the challenge of uh, keeping a, a painting more simply, right? Without getting too bogged down with going into your boxes and finding pastels. If you already have a pre-selected palette and you stick with it, 
then it just makes it easy, easier, a lot less uh, stress involved in thinking, and you can just kind of paint, uh, I guess really with more emotion. And sometimes I just like to change it up and do that. Not always. I mean, sometimes I spend a lot of time thinking and planning. But sometimes I really just want to relax. And the first of the year is a really good time to just be more playful with our paintings and not um, be so hard on ourselves. All right, so I've broken up those trees a little, given a little bit of sky hole. And now I'm going to come in and really nail the light. And in order to do that, I'm going to, I like the color I used, I'm going to press harder, right? So I'm going to just really come in and shout with my marks. Up until this point, I've been uh, very uh, light, light uh, with my touch, right? I've like pressed very lightly so that I get nice soft layers. But now I want to differentiate those soft layers thin layers with some thicker layers and by pressing harder I'm able to get nice thick passages of pastel. And I can decide at this point do I want there to be detail in the grass or do I want it to be more of a abstracted quality to the painting. Um, the painting that I did for our Patreon group um, was more detailed. I ended up putting in a lot more grasses. So I think just to keep things different and just for the fun of it, I'm going to just suggest the grasses and not put in every single blade of grass, right? So I still want to invite the viewer into the painting. So I'm using the side of this harder pastel. And by the way, you can use hard pastels on top of soft pastel layers. Uh, it does work. All right, so I want to invite you in, like, so I want your eye to follow here, and I need to give you something to look at when you get there, so I just put a nice little mark of purple, and then I want to pull your eye up over to here, so let's give a little bit more contrast with the purple up against the yellow. That's a little bit of contrast. Now, when you get up to these trees, I want you to enjoy the trees, so I'm going to add a little bit more contrast with some harder edges and more detail. I put in the tree trunks. I don't think I even was talking when I did that about that, but I'm going to just put in a couple more with a darker blue just to hint at some of those tree trunks. And let's continue the, that idea of a harder edge or a thicker mark by creating some shouting marks up in the sky so that we really can see the marks uh, up against all this nice soft pastel marks, then some hard edged shouting marks where we can see the thickness of the of the actual pastel marks. I'll do this a little bit more in here. Um, again, I could come in. I always tend to do this. I get I get carried away with trying to put in grasses and detail. It's really hard to say. You know what? Stop. Let's just keep it simple this time. Um, add a little bit more purple little marks in here. I have five minutes left on this uh, painting. So remember I set the timer for 20 minutes. This is a good time. You have five minutes left to, to stop. Take a deep breath. Step back and ask yourself, okay, where's the eye going? Where, does it, where do I want the eye to go? What can I do to enhance that movement of the eye? So I really want you to come up here so I think I can uh, maybe a little bit harder press with my pastel to get some another mark right in here, maybe right in here. So there's a little bit of contrast in this area. Then we've got the purple, then we've got the yellow against the purple, and then we've got kind of come up through the trees. I think we could do a little bit more with the sky holes, but again, don't want to get too carried away. Sometimes less is more, and I'd rather stop and have something, you know, fresh, and then come back and evaluate it um, after it sits for a while. Um, I think I can add just a little bit harder marks just to pull out some of the foliage and this main area of trees, and I'll leave these guys alone. Come in with my sky color, 
and make that top edge a little bit more variation. And I think that's going to be it. I think I'm going to stop. That was a 20 minute painting that was uh, almost, yeah, 20 minutes by the time I, uh, I started and finished and talked at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you can follow along, find something very simple, and just have fun with it. Keep a limited palette, block it in, rub it in, layer, and then figure out how you want to finish so that the viewer's eye moves through the painting and you've created a wonderful visual journey. And I hope you had fun painting. And I really would love for you to join me on Patreon. I've got a Patreon Insiders group. There's four years of of content there, demos, challenges. We've got a great community. Um, this is my appeal to you this year. I would really love for you to join us. I have a great uh, program planned. I'll be here on YouTube still, but there's a lot more over on Patreon as well. And uh, again, I'll put the link right after this video and in the description. And thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful and creative new year, and I hope to see more of you soon. And let's paint.